Welcome to a brand new episode of Go. I'm your host, Dana Giesbrecht, and today we are here at the Edmonton Garrison for their Fight for Soldier on Taekwondo training camp. Taekwondo is one of the only sports sanctioned by the military where individuals can learn to improve their fighting skills and is also a great way for former soldiers to retain their fighting identity. On the show today, we're going to be speaking with a four-time para-taekwondo world champion as well as a soldier who's been suffering from PTSD for the last seven years, the first time that he's traveled for something like this and been in a gathering of this size. A pretty powerful story. Stay tuned, it's going to be a great show. But first, Sean TV's Tim Dancy takes a look at a new magazine focused on Central Edmonton's evolving culture. This is Lisa Standeven, a four-time para-taekwondo world champion. And in the red over here, we have Chris Cotemanche all the way from Ottawa. Hear their incredible stories of overcoming adversity after the break. Welcome back. This is Lisa Standeven, a four-time para-taekwondo world champion. If you're just tuning in now, we're at the Edmonton Garrison for their Fight for Soldier on Taekwondo training camp. Lisa is a local girl, and she actually quit Taekwondo for 20 years after she was in an accident at 23, but gained her black belt at 41. We're going to be speaking with her in just a moment as she takes a few rounds out of her partner. Plus, later in the show, we're going to be speaking with a gentleman named Chris, who's been suffering from PTSD for seven years. Years. It's the first time he's been to a gathering of this size, traveled all the way from Ottawa for this event. Stay tuned for both of them. But first, uh, world champion and Olympic medalist Patrick Chan was recently in Sherwood Park inspiring young figure skaters. Here's Sean TV's Jen McDonald with that story. He's one of the top professional boxers in Canada and he's only 23 years old. And as Sean TV's Dave Dawson reports, this young man has only begun to hit his stride. Thanks for that, Dave. We are now joined by Lisa Stand, even a four-time para-taekwondo world champion and an Edmonton local. I love it. Uh, but you're not part of the military. You came out just for this event today. That's correct. Uh, Master Kim, Captain Kim, invited me out uh, because of my experience in uh, some world para-taekwondo championships and to help uh, foster the Soldier, Soldier On program here at the base. And how's it been so far today? It's uh, it's amazing. It was really tough. These guys are these are tough individuals. Let me tell you. Um, let's backtrack to when you were 23 years old. What happened um, when you were in an accident? Uh, I worked on uh, heavy equipment, uh, and I was servicing a D8 cat, and I got my hand caught in the fan, and uh, it it essentially just peeled away um, most of my hand and and uh, left me with. Uh, an abbreviated limb, so to speak. And before that, you were very involved in Taekwondo in your, in your late teen years. Yes, yeah. I started Taekwondo when I was 17, and uh, uh, I, I kept going until my accident when I was 23. And then you took a break for 20 years. What brought you back to the sport? Uh, well, I had three kids, and my husband and I felt it was, it was important for them to learn a self-defense. So we went back so that they could learn and caught the bug again. Yeah. Four-time world champion. That's absolutely incredible. Um, what kind of hard work did you put into this sport to be able to achieve such an accomplishment? Um, I spent about five years uh, earning my black belt, and then uh, when I had the opportunity to travel uh, to world uh, world championships, I started training and uh, worked with a lot of people in, in the Taekwondo world, and I had a lot of friends, a lot of helpers, a lot of people that came and sparred with me, and I spent a lot of mornings and evenings uh, on the mats and in the gym. Well, absolutely incredible. Congratulations, Lisa, and thanks so much for speaking with us. Thank you. Stay tuned. More after the break. Welcome back. If you're just tuning in now, we are at the Edmonton Garrison for their Fight for Soldier On Taekwondo Training Camp. The Soldier On program is a pretty incredible program. It helps former soldiers who are suffering from mental or physical illnesses or disabilities uh, reintegrate back into the forces or just help them cope with daily life. And we're going to be speaking with one soldier from that program. This is Chris Cotemanche, all the way from Ottawa. He's come to Edmonton for this Taekwondo Training Camp specifically. He's been suffering from PTSD for about seven years, and this is the first time in, in a couple of years that he's been to a gathering of this size, and he says that it's made him feel absolutely amazing to be part of a team again. We're going to hear his story in just a moment, but first, we've all heard of Roll Up the Rim. What about Roll Up the Sleeve for a good read? Here's Shot TV's Bianca Jade. Did you know that Canadian diamonds are amongst the world's most sought after? 
But where do they come from? Here's Sean TV's Tim Dancy with that information in today's episode of Jewelry Talk. We are now here with Chris Cotemanche, all the way from Ottawa, participating in the Soldier on Taekwondo training camp. Uh, and this is a, 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 an incredible experience for you. You've been suffering from PTSD for seven years now. Before we, we get to your journey here, can you talk about where you've come from with your time in the military? Well, I've deployed back in uh, 2007 to Afghanistan. The following year, I was deployed with the DART uh, in 80. Uh, to help out the, the population over there. Then came, went back to Afghanistan in 2010 and 80 again in 2010. So it's been a, a roller coaster of deployments and, and missions all over the place. Um, in the last seven years that you've been suffering from PTSD, can you describe what some of your symptoms are like? Well, for the first few years, actually, for, for the most part of those seven years, I didn't realize and nobody realized that I, I was suffering from PTSD until, until some of the symptoms became very obvious. Uh, Hypervigilance, anxiety, uh, n recurring nightmares, uh, flashbacks. I'll walk down a street and a sound or a smell or something will trigger uh, the anxiety or a flashback. So it's, it's really, it's one of those diseases that you have to, to accept it and then learn to, to deal with it. You were talking to me off camera about your hypervigilance and that I this is shocking for, for someone who's never experienced it. Just driving down the, the road can be very um, anxiety ridden for you. Exactly. PTSD in some ways uh, makes a, a barrier. You can't put that switch back off when you come back from a mission. So it's as if I'm always every single day on a mission. Mm. So I'm always on the lookout, uh, looking for enemy position. For I'm driving, I'm driving very aggressively because that's the way we used to do it back in, a, in Afghanistan. So that's the kind of stuff that, that's happening all the time. And, and being hypervigilant 24-7, uh, it burns you because you're so tired of being vigilant mm. that by the, by the end of the day, you're just exhausted. What does that mean for you for socializing and for work life? Well, you mistrust people. Like you, you, you can't put your 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 trust in anybody. Uh, I've lost a lot of friends because nobody understood why I was so angry all the time. Why I was always on on the lookout. So I've pretty much cleaned up all of my friends around me. Thank God my family decided to stick around and my wife decided to stick by my side. Otherwise, I don't know what would have happened to me. What is it like to be here today in Edmonton? at a gathering this size and being part of a team again, learning ta Taekwondo? Well, I've been on sick leave for over a year now. And when you're on sick leave, you're not part of the team. You're on the sideline. You feel like you're not doing your part for the mission. So this is the first time in two years that I can actually get the courage together to go out of my house and get with a group doing something. I knew nothing about Taekwondo, so coming to, uh, to Edmonton, Taking part in a Taekwondo camp was getting me outside my comfort zone, but simply getting out of the house without my service dog uh, is also stretching the limit of what I could possibly do, in my mind uh, at least. So it makes me feel like a soldier again, makes me feel like part of the team again, and that's such a great feeling. And, and the base here at CFB Edmonton has been just amazing. They make us feel very welcome and part of the, of the troops. Taekwondo, are you picking it up quickly? How's it been going so far? Well, the muscles are, are quite uh -huh. sore right now after <laughs> two days. I'm sure that it's probably going to get better by the end of the week. It's an amazing sport. I, I'm loving it. Yeah. Uh, I'm starting to seriously consider maybe picking up Taekwondo uh, you know, after this camp and, and, and train in Ottawa uh, in that sport. Excellent. Chris, thank you so much for sharing your story with You're us. You're welcome. Before we go, here is your on-the-go calendar. For more information on the programs available to soldiers like Chris suffering from PTSD or other physical or mental disabilities, visit soldieron.ca. From the Edmonton Garrison, I've been your host, Dana Giesbrecht. We'll see you next time.